Hi, everybody. Welcome to Roar. Woo! Okay. So I just want to start out by saying I have this really cute jacket, but it's like a million degrees outside. So I'm just going to do this really quick. I'm going to Kim Kardashian it. <laughs> so you can see how cute I was supposed to look today, but it is way too hot and I will never get through this 30 minutes with that much heat. I remember you and your glasses are amazing. Okay. We have a lot to get to get through today. So this is a pretty epic, huge release. I have a, hu a few surprises, which you may have noticed on the table, which we will get to. Um, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, just getting over a cold. Totally good, not contagious, but <laughs> we may have some hiccups in here. Oh my gosh, Roar. So this collection has been a long time coming. So um, if you watch my Tuesday videos, you've heard some of this already. But when I was a kid and they would say like, oh, look, we found a new dinosaur on the Natural History Channel or whatever, I'd be like, big deal. They're everywhere. <laughs> because I thought that every hill was just a dinosaur that laid down and died like 65 million years ago and then grass grew over it because they all look like brontosauruses, which I'm pretty sure is not even a dinosaur anymore, but Pluto, brontosauruses, we've lost them all. Um, we're losing planets, we're losing animals, it's crazy. Anyway, so um, dinosaurs have always been a thing for me because my mom never told me that theory was wrong. Um, I'm just just want to put that out there. It's not all my fault. Um, so I believe that way, way longer than I should have. But um, so dinosaurs are amazing. And I've always wanted to do a dinosaur collection. Um, but I didn't want to do a typical dinosaur collection, right? Like, I didn't want it to be all brown and green and scary and scaly. Um, I wanted to do something that suited me and suited a lot of you that was beautiful and elegant and took cues from traditional sort of chintz fabrics from bygone eras, but that have surprise dinosaurs in it. And so that's what Roar is. Roar is a beautiful sort of historically inspired textile collection design, sort of. I mean, that's where I start. It's not necessarily where I end up. I'm Tula Pink to the, the way. Did I say that already? <laughs> Sorry, I just have so much to tell you that I'm like racing through my thoughts right now. So I wanna walk you through this collection because it's a little bit different than some of my previous collections. Some things you have seen me do before, but I've done a few things here that are a little different. Can I, Tiffany, will you help me? Um, if you can just walk back and forth so everybody can see this. So one of the prints, this one's called Meteor Shower. And I wanna show you the full fabric because it's important. So this one has a border stripe along each selvage edge um, that can be cut down to about eight and a half inches to 10 inches is sort of ideal for that. Um, so this print is a whole bunch of meteors flying through the sky. It was originally called The End, but everybody thought that was too morbid. <laughs> um, so it's now called Meteor Shower. And it was originally just the center of that piece was the print, but I was bored. And so I created a whole scene on each edge of it to spice it up a bit. Um, I also have a jacket in that, which if it cools down enough, I will be wearing and I look adorable in it. So be sure to comment because I love positive interactions. Um, but so this is a really versatile piece. So the center of the fabric is a non-directional sort of textural, easy piece that you can use to make any kind of piecing or block making while the edges, the borders, you can use on borders, you can use them on clothing and skirts and all kinds of different ways. So I've used that piece here in this quilt to border my large giant star. Um, I've also used it across the pockets of this bag. So there's lots of different ways that you can use that piece. Another sort of border stripe print that I did is the Triceratops. This print's called Trifecta. And so it's like a squiggly border stripe that you can, again, use in a very similar fashion. You can use for borders. I left a lot of room between each one for cutting down, seam allowances, 
all that sort of thing. And you can see those pieces in the borders here. So this is the same size border, one using the sort of border stripe print, meteor shower, not the end, and this one using the trifecta print. So we've got two big border stripes that really focus on the dinosaurs. And then, well, obviously we have to go to her because she's a beautiful angel. So obviously it cannot be a dinosaur line without the majestic T-Rex. It is really hard to make a T-Rex not look terrifying, I will tell you. Um, I had to keep making her teeth smaller and smaller and smaller and her eye bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so she's wildly out of proportion, but lovely all the same. Um, I relate to her because as you know, by the time I was 15, I was six feet tall. So it's really hard to make a six feet tall person look sweet and non-confrontational. So I understand the plight of Lady T-Rex. And she sits in like a beautiful, like old school topiary in like an old ceramic vase because of course she does. She's a delicate, delicate angel. <laughs> It's not her fault that her teeth are three inches long. She was just born that way. <laughs> Give her a break. Um, and then this piece is called Gift Wrapped, called, spelled R-A-P-T like Raptor because I'm hilarious. <laughs> um, and so this is a really traditional large scale damask print. Um, it comes in three colors. Um, and this is probably my favorite piece of fabric I've ever designed in my entire life. Because it does everything that I want a piece of fabric to do. From a distance, it's a beautiful, elegant damask print. As you get closer, you see more and more dinosaurs in it. So there's two dinosaurs, there, well three really, there's these little, little guys here, full bodied raptors. And then there's, where are you? Where are you? Oh, and then there's this little happy guy going, ah, <laughs> right there. But I love, I mean, I'm always trying to do that with fabric where you have a different sort of interpretation of the fabric the closer you get to it. I love the idea that something's just like sort of pretty and easy from a distance. And as you get on, closer and closer and closer, you get different things from it and it gets quirkier and quirkier and quirkier right? I love that the closer you look at something, the more interesting it becomes. And that's what I really try to do with my fabric. And here is another dinosaur. So this one has the pterodactyl in it, a little bit more difficult to find because I like to challenge you. Um, so this is like a really old school, I never, I've only read the word, I've never heard it said, but like Jacobian, Jacobian, Jacobian Myers, whatever. Um, if you live in California, you know those attorneys at law that do, <laughs> anyway. Um, so it's this really traditional sort of almost Paisley-esque flower design with these little pterodactyls sort of flying in, so flying all through the flowers. So it is a dinosaur line, clearly. Um, but there's a lot of piece, there's a lot of really incredible support pieces in it um, for bindings, for settings, for just coordinating pieces. Because they're dinosaurs, we had to do a huge overscale polka dot called dinosaur eggs. So we have this big, big scale, I think it's like a three inch polka dot. Maybe it's a two and a half inch polka dot. I don't know, I haven't measured it in like six months. Um, but a huge overscale polka dot called dinosaur eggs. And then I did a couple of other prints to support that will work across a lot of different collections. So this one's called Stargazer. Here, I'll take, are you done with this one? So this one's called Stargazer and it's a lattice work that has an ombre rainbow of stars that go from one end to the other. And if you've worked with any of my rainbow ombres before, I always repeat them at least twice so you get the full color scale even in a fat quarter. So all of my prints are designed that way so that they break down from full yardage even, I, I hate it when you buy a fat quarter and you don't get the whole thing. Like, it's just infuriating, right? I mean, you're nodding, which is giving me a lot of validation, which is why I'm looking directly at you. Okay. Um, so thank you for that. I require a lot of it. Um, 
The other sort of coordinating print that goes with this that'll come in a couple different colors is this little guy. Oh my gosh, I forgot what it's called. <laughs> What? Northern Lights, thank you. Lovely jubblies in the house. Um, and it kind of, when you see it wide, it creates this sort of oil slick finish. But when you cut it down, it's just this little rainbow sort of trickle of color that runs throughout the fabric. But when you see it big, it's like, it's almost like an oil slick on the, on the road, whatever. Um, so those are some of the support pieces. They come and these, all the support piece designs are actually pulled from that main Raptor print, that gift wrap print. So all the little bits that are in the gift wrap print are pulled out and made into their own fabrics. So that's how they all coordinate together. But that's not all. Um, <laughs> so the fabric comes in two colorways. So there's this pinky, peachy, aqua green colorway. And then there's, um, can I actually, Sarah, will you help me here, please? And then there's this sort of cooler purple colorway. But the way I've designed this, and you'll see it as you, let me go right here. I like to be between my people. Um, these pieces, the teal, aqua and green, and the aqua and gray, are the bridge pieces that tie the two colorways together. So the, this kind of bleeds into the green and aqua, this bleeds into the charcoal and aqua, and then these two edges of the colorway bridge the pink to the purple. So it does create like a full color wheel, which you can see in the main kit quilt, which we'll talk about in a minute if I don't run out of time. Um, so those are the two colorways, but that's not all. Um, we also have to coordinate with this collection because you know I never just stop at designing fabric because boring. We will have a full ribbon collection that goes with this that's featured on some of the bags. We don't have all the final samples yet. These are the nightmares of production, but there's quite a few of them that are that you can see on some of the bags. We have the stargazer in a woven ribbon here. And these will be, we'll have final samples of these later, but these will ship. So in case you haven't heard, Renaissance Ribbons has been purchased by Chelsea of Pink Door Fabrics, which means that the person who knows so much about my, in advance about my collections, because she's also doubles as my photographer, um, will also know about my ribbon designs in advance, and they will now ship at the same time. Thank you very much. So the ribbon collection will ship in April. April, somebody, April, thank you, sales rep corner. Um, we'll ship in April with the fabrics. So you'll get these things all at the same time, which will be much, much better for everybody. We're also introducing to go with Roar, new Roar project bags, which I am super excited about. So these look a little bit on the green side, again, production, we're going through it. We're getting the colors right to match the fabric exactly, but it'll come in three sizes. We made a couple of changes to this round of bags. So this is called the medium size, even though it's the smallest of these three. <laughs> these things are not up to me, you guys. Um, so the medium size, we've introduced a one and a half inch gusset so that you can fit a lot more in it. Um, the large, the middle size, um, well, is exactly the same. So it has a two inch gusset, which you can fit, like I think we fit up to 10 yards of fabric in this. Like, so this is a really great, like sort of add on. If you're selling kits made out of the fabric, you put them in the bag, sell it, incorporate that into the price and make the kit something, come in something actually useful that they don't throw away which is really nice. And then we have the XL. So I would like you all to know that this was actually my brother Cameron's idea to make this, which is amazing. So what it is, is it's a, I think it's 22 inches by 22 inches, something like that, that has a zip that goes all the way across the top and down the side. So you can fit huge amount of things in here that won't, without trying to stuff it through the top zipper. 
And we have made a slight change to this to make it easier to zip because the last one was a little tough to zip, I know. Um, so it's got a rounded corner. We've bound the zipper tape so it doesn't fold into the zipper anymore. So we've solved that problem. I mean, I could zip this all day, you guys. <laughs> like, without a problem. See? Like butter, right? That's about the time it will usually catch. Um, but that's not all. Oh my gosh, I feel like Oprah. Um, <laughs> We also have Orafil, we have a 10 spool thread collection, 50 weight. This is my favorite weight of thread for English paper piecing and machine sewing. So we have a 10 spool, small spool coordinating thread collection. <sighs> oh my gosh, you guys, we have so much to get through. Um, we've got ribbons, thread, project bags, fabric, all of this stuff, um, just so you all know, in case you're not aware, I do a video every Tuesday, um, a 15 minute video. We talk about all of this stuff in my videos. So if there's ever, I mean, this is like an avalanche of information, well aware. Um, so if you wanna know like, what is that pattern? What is that pattern that you made from that bag? 99% of the time it's gonna be by Annie, just saying. Um, because those are the only bags I can make that turn out right for me for some reason. Um, but so a lot of these are by Annie. We have Funky Friends Factory. And she also has a T-Rex that I didn't have time to make. But um, so we have Funky Friends Factory, little stuffed animals. All of this stuff is on my Tuesday videos. And those Tuesday videos are for you. They're we're speaking to you, telling you what I'm making out of my fabric, but we're also talking to your customer. Because remember, I don't sell anything. So I'm doing all of this to drive customers to you. Um, so I want you to have the most successful run with my fabric as humanly possible. So all of that content is something that I do myself to help you sell my product. So feel, yeah, thank you. Um, but feel free to repost those videos. Purge the information from those videos. Repost those videos. Um, a lot of shops have had a lot of success kidding the things I show on my videos. Do it, it's for you. I'm not gonna come after you and go, you're copying me, I want you to. <laughs> That's the point. So, um, so we've got bags and projects. We're constantly feeding inspiration through my Instagram and Facebook for you to use. Repost what we post, it's what it's for. So please help my content generate content for your stores. That's literally why we do it. Um, and that's what it's for, so feel free to repost. What time am I supposed to finish, somebody? Woohoo! okay, I got 11 minutes. Um, so any questions you have about any of these bags and things, either on my video or just ask me, I'll be here all weekend and I can give you more information on those. Um, we also have, with the fabric collection, which I forgot to talk about, our 108s. Um, so we have it in pink. Sorry, I'm like, is this a nice angle for the video? Um, and on a cream background. So we've got the 108s in two colorways. Hi. Uh, <laughs> I love seeing all these people I know that I only see once a year. And the kit. So this was designed by Stacy Day. You know, it's pretty clear whenever there's a giant medallion quilt, it's probably Stacy Day's design. She seems to think in roundels. So, um, but I just thought this was so spectacular. Um, the way she used all the pieces and then used this border stripe to go all the way around and fade into the middle. So this is the kit quilt for Roar, it's called Big Bang. And we actually weren't gonna do a kit for Roar because we've got Block of the Months, so we've got all this stuff going on, but this was so good, we decided we had to. So now we have a kit for Roar, woo, Big Bang. So, so excited about that. One last thing, I believe. Do I have one more thing? Yes, I have one more thing. So we have a surprise product we're launching here at Market. We weren't sure if it was gonna be ready in time, but welcome to my Oliso iron. So it uses fairy dust, 
which we all know and love, around the bottom, but the birds are replaced with fish. And there's fish on the water tank. Fish, and then on the bottom, it says, please don't feed the fish. Because it'll gum up your steam engine. So it comes in the full size. Obviously, this is just a sample because there's nothing to plug into it. But so this is our final, final sample of my Oliso. This one is the um, 1600, the TG 1600 Pro Plus Smart Irons. I can't remember all the numbers. And for when you travel, the new M3 Mini Iron. So this is their brand new Mini Iron. Brand new. Um, super cute, custom little silicone plate on the bottom, same green tank. This one does not say, please don't feed the fish on the bottom, but it has a little teal pink logo on it. Um, but it has a headlight. <laughs> if you haven't used one of these yet, they're really cute and it has a headlight, which I think is really funny. And they've, um, some of the changes that they've made to the handle keeps it from getting so hot. Um, and it stands up which the old ones did not. Can you see that? Maybe I can do it up here. It stands up. So I will be in the Oliso booth both on Saturday and on Sunday. And we will be showing the new irons. You can see all the new features of the M3 Pro. And if you're so inclined to prepare for it, because the theme of it is please don't feed the fish, you can use your besties fabric, which is shipping right now, to make a cute little travel case. So cute, and look how cute it looks with the iron. And the, so we're doing a little booth signing. We put the schedule on my Instagram and Facebook of where I'll be when on the floor since I don't have a booth this year. Um, and the first 50 people will get little fish food charm packs of all the colors of fairy dust. So the first 50 people to the booth to sign in will get one, or to sign in. You don't have to sign in. It's not like summer camp. Um, the first 50 people to come by will get a little fish food, little fish food charm pack. Does anybody have any questions about any? Of, yeah. No, it's not cordless. We just don't have a cord on it because this is a production sample and I'm not allowed to plug it in. And so they make it as foolproof as possible for me. <laughs> Um, it is not cordless. That is a great question. Thank you. Um, oh, one more thing about the irons. They will definitely be available in the U.S. and Canada. We are this close to making sure they'll be available in Australia and the EU and the U.K. So your distributors hassle them. Just bother them the way your customers bug you. Okay? Um, we're this close to getting them there. Yeah. Do I ever send trunk shows to quilt shops? Yeah, I'm totally willing to do that. Um, the best way to go about that is go through your sales rep because they can maybe organize like a territorial thing. But yes, I have one more thing to show you unless you have questions. Yes. The iron, oh, such a good question. Thank you for helping me do my job well. The irons will, are shipping in February. So there'll be a quarter one product, which is lovely for you because I don't ship anything else in quarter one. So I was gonna give you a break, but now I'm giving you an iron. <laughs> do I have price points yet? Checker will have that. I don't work with the money part. I can't be trusted. Um, one more thing to show you guys before we check out is, can I get a quilt holder? Can I actually, Tiffany, you're lovely, but Stacy, you're taller. <laughs> one more thing that we're announcing at this quilt market is the pattern for the tumbling block quilt. It is finally done. So if you carry true colors and my solids, this is the quilt for that because that's all it uses. 
is my true colors and solids. But you could easily substitute all kinds of stuff in for this because it's just pure color. It uses a billion fabrics. It's a nightmare to kit. Um, <laughs> But the quilt is so worth it. It's so worth it. And sometimes I have to torture you guys and I'm so, so sorry about it, but it's all for the love of the quilt. So it's finally finished. Um, the pattern will be available from paperpieces.com. So this is an English paper piece quilt. And we just spent a year turning all of your customers into English paper piecers. Um, so they're ready for it. As soon as they're done and their fingers heal, they'll be ready to start another project. So you're welcome for torturing your customers. Um, but this is a really, it's a really fun, easy one. The pieces are relatively large. Those pieces cut out beautifully from a design roll strip, a two and a half inch strip. The diamonds fit on a two and a half inch strip. Um, and we have some new pre-cuts that are coming out that would be a really nice, do I have that? I don't have that. Um, so Free Spirit has put together a couple new pre-cuts that will feed really well into this. Um, one is a stack of three de like mini design rolls. Two of the design rolls are a selection of solids and then the middle one is tiny beasts, tiny dots, and tiny stripes. Do you have those? Thank you. So, and this is all stuff you can clearly see better when you sit with your sales rep, obviously. Um, but so there's two colorways of this. One is the glimmer color palette and one is the glow color palette. But it, two of the, and you can kind of see down here, so two of the mini design rolls are all solids and then the middle one is tiny dots, tiny stripes, and tiny beasts. And then the other thing that we're releasing that I've been begging for for years and years and years is a complete solids fat eighth bundle. So it's every single one of my solids, 44 solids in one bundle of fat eights, which I've been asking for for a long time because every time I make a quilt, I want to use every single one and I have to pull all of my bolts off my shelf and cut them. And like, I don't have time for that. So now I can just pull a bundle. So this will be a really great one too. And the ordering deadlines for these are November 20th. So that's pretty soon, less than a month. So think about these, get your orders in. Um, order cutouts are November 20th. Any questions? Because I explained everything so well, you know exactly what's going on. Good, because I don't. Okay. Um, so we've got the new pre-cuts. Roar is the big star of today, but we're also launching the paper pieces, quilt, the kit, the project bags. Yeah. Just the quilt has a name. The quilt does have a name, but I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> Did, didn't they drop off a piece pack somewhere? No, that's not it. No, that's somebody else's. I totally forgot it because it's like totally irrelevant to the design of the quilt. So I can't remember it. It's like something about space like all of mine are because I watch too much Battlestar Galactica. So everything has a space name. Yeah, there you go. Um, any other questions? The beautifully organized, yes, I will come to you one second. Um, like all of my partners are in the same two, 300 block of the floor tomorrow, kind of all bunched together. Uh, Free Spirit is in the 300, 400. Paper Pieces in th is in 300. Uh, Aliso's in 300. Every, like Brewer's Writer, like everybody's kind of right in the, in the same little neighborhood, which is super nice on the floor. Again, my schedule of where I'll be all market is posted on Instagram and Facebook. If you want to come see me, say hi, tell me I look adorable, whatever, I will be there. Yes, my dear. Oh yeah, the, there's so many quilts. There's a book quilt. Um, so this is a quilt that Free Spirit put together. I don't know much about it. There's always extras, right? Book nerd. Book nerd, which is adorbs, and I love it. Um, yeah. Have you um, thought about doing ombres with your solids? Have I thought about doing ombres with my solids? Um, no, but I could think about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
It's like when the time somebody said, will you ever do solids? And I'm like, no, I'm not gonna do solids. What do you design about a solid? And now I have a collection of solids. So if I say I'm not gonna do something, that's almost a guarantee that I will. So yeah, I have not thought about that, but I could. Any other questions? Because we have a really big schoolhouse right after this. I hope you're staying. What? I can't hear you if you don't use words. What's the next deja vu? What's the next deja vu? You rude, I'm talking about roar. Hold your horses. And we have giveaways.